Okay, hello everyone. We're not quite ready to start, but we will be starting in a minute. Uh, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy day to show up today. This is, uh, we're using GoToWebinar, as you know, and uh, I'll have a little housekeeping on that once we get started. But in the meantime, I'm really curious where people are calling in from today. And if you go to the question box, you can type your answer in that and let me know where you're calling in from today, and I'll start off. I'm calling in today from San Rafael, California. We're about 20 minutes north of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's sunny and cold today. So what about you? Well, it's probably not as cold as Ian is in Nova Scotia, <laughs> one of the most beautiful places in the world if you like oceans and rocks. Okay, somebody else. Hillary is calling in from Modesto. I know where that is. And British Columbia, that is the extreme opposite end of Canada from Nova Scotia. So that's cool. Hi, Carmel. Uh, Walnut Creek, another Bay Area person. San Diego, oh, Lake District. That's beautiful up there. Blaine says it's snowing in Colorado. Yeah, I, that's fun. I used to be a New Yorker, and we loved snow days, but uh, I've kind of gotten over that since I moved to California. Sunny and cold in Orleans, California. I don't know where Orleans is. Never heard of it. Okay, so west of Seattle. 60 miles south of Seattle. Snowy Utah. I guess a lot of you people are in snow. All right, well, we'll try to warm you up a little bit with some real uh, hardcore book marketing today because that's what this is all about. And uh, I'm going to take a brief pause now and then actually start our presentation. And that's going to give me an opportunity to hit the record button because we are we will have an, a replay for you uh, once the event is finished. So um, I hope you have your favorite beverage. You're belted in and ready to uh, take off on this rocket because Joan is not going to stop once she gets started. Okay, welcome. This is Joel Friedlander from thebookdesigner.com and authortoolkits.com. Thanks, everyone, for coming today. I'm here uh, today with Joan Stewart, um, a close partner uh, in our author toolkits business. Joan is the author of a number of products that we sell. Joan is a uh, publicity professional. She calls herself the publicity hound because when she gets going, she's like a dog with a bone, not going to let go. Anyway, Joan runs the most excellent publicity and PR site, uh, the publicity hound. I recommend it highly. She has one of the best email newsletters on the planet Earth. Uh, I'm a regular subscriber and I have been for years. And Joan also used to be a, the editor of a newspaper and that gave her a unique seat to see a lot of media kits, press kits coming at her and learning how people kind of mess this up and don't get it right. And that's not doing yourself many favors. So without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Joan, and we're going to be talking today about the Indie Author's Guide to Creating a Killer Media Kit. Take it away, Joan. Thank you, Joel. Hi, everybody. Um, if you can hear me, just say yes in the Q&A box so I know that I am being heard, because if you can't hear me, can you guys hear me? Am I good, Joel? I hear you great, Joan. Okay, good. All right, off we go. I'm so happy you're all here, and I'll tell you, Joel could not have been more accurate when he said how people mess this up. <laughs> I worked in the newspaper business for 22 years, and I saw every uh, media kits in every stripe and color from excellent to really horrible, and I want you to create a media kit for your book that is excellent, that's going to give you a ton of publicity. So today I'm going to walk you through step 
step-by-step -step on exactly how to do it. Here's what we're going to cover today. I want to start by explaining why a media kit is so important to your success as an author. I'll explain the seven major audiences that will read it. There are a whole lot of people there who might access your kit, but there are seven major audiences that I have in mind that will be looking for specific items within your kit. I will explain how to use it and how not to use it because there's a lot of confusion over this. And then I'm going to walk you step by step through each of the 10 important items that your media kit should include if you want the maximum publicity and promotion possible. Finally, we're going to tell you how we are going to save you time, money, and stress creating your kit. We're going to actually shave months off the chore of creating it. So let's dive in to why these media kits are so darn important. First of all, it is your major marketing package. If you email a pitch to a journalist, let's say you email a story idea about you or your book, and they write back and say, yeah, that sounds great. Um, can you send me your media kit? And if you don't have a media kit, you have just slowed down the process tremendously because you're, <laughs> you're going to have to go create one really quickly because you've got somebody on the line who's interested and you don't want that to happen to you. You want to have one at the ready, ready to be sent on a moment's notice. You need a kit that anyone can access and your media kit will be at your website, preferably under a button called Media Kit or Media Room or Media Buzz so that people can get their hands on the materials at 3 a.m. while you're in bed. Journalists expect you to have this if you are serious about getting publicity for your expertise or your book you are going to have for them every piece of information they need to report on you easily. Media kits ensure accuracy in news stories because you are going to hand them on a silver platter all the information they are going to need about your book so they can cut and paste it right into their stories. If you don't have a media kit, they may have to go back and forth with you in an email interview or they may have to inter interview you on the phone. That could be a big pain in the neck. You risk them writing inaccurate information and one piece of inaccurate info, two pieces of inaccurate information that you don't want them screwing up. The first one would be the website address where people can go to buy your book and the second one would be the price. If they accidentally lead a digit off of the price and people think your book is $2.95 instead of $12.95, they're going to be mighty disappointed when they come to your sales page or your Amazon page. Media kits help people promote you and your book. And they also give you thousands of dollars in free publicity so that you don't have to buy advertising. Everybody and their mother out there, newspapers and magazines and TV and, and radio and Facebook and LinkedIn, they're all ready to sell you paid ads, but I am all about free. Let's try to go after the free stuff first before we have to rely on advertising. There are seven key audiences that are going to be using your media kit. Let's go through them one by one. The first audience is journalists. These include reporters, freelancers, editors, broadcasters, TV people, um, uh, radio talk show hosts, if they book you for an interview, there's an item in your media kit, and we'll go over this, that radio people in particular are going to be looking for. And you want to make sure you have it. The second audience is bloggers. If you are pitching a blogger um, an idea, to write about you, they may be very interested in what you have to say and they may be looking for, let's say for example, photos. 
inside your media kit because they don't have the ability to take a photograph of you. They're on the other side of the world, but they want to write about you. And if you have a couple of photos in your kit that they can use as part of their blog post, all the better. Number three, book reviewers. This is so important. You have got to have book reviews on Amazon and elsewhere, particularly if you are writing fiction. And reviewers are going to be looking for specific things inside of your kit. If you're selling your book through a bricks and mortar retail outlet or anywhere online, there are specific Items, one, one in particular in your kit that retailers will be looking for and you want to be sure you have it. Individual buyers. These would include people who are interested in your title. Maybe they go to your Amazon page and they look at your book, but they're not quite sure if they want to spend $24.95 or even $14.95 on your book. And they may go over to your website to look around there to see if they can find anything out about your book before they whip out their credit card. And you want to have the information, everything they need to know, within that media kit accessible by anybody. The sixth one, uh, six audience will be event planners and these include, these could include um, librarians in your community, let's say who bring in authors to speak at library events. It could include an event planner for your local chamber of commerce, your local rotary group. An event planner might even be a book, a book club that might bring in a local author in to speak or if you're going out of town you might look for some out of town book clubs in the town maybe where you're going to be speaking I always try to piggyback um, a speaking engagement onto one I've already got and book clubs are great places to speak seven anyone who wants to promote you or your book as you start to build up a fan base people are going to be enthusiastic about recommending your book to other people and you want to make it as easy on them as possible to do that okay for all seven of these audiences all seven you have one key goal with your media kit and here it is you want to make their job easy and that's exactly what your media kit's going to do because it's going to have all the materials inside that they need. By making their job easy, they are going to promote you and your book. A lot of us, I know, because I see it all the time on social media, so many authors, especially on social media, fall back on this key phrase on social media. It's buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. And I don't know about you, are any of you tired of seeing this on social media? You're constantly seeing authors hawking their book. And if you've got a great media kit, you are not going to have to worry about hawking your book because your, your media kit is going to include a lot of information, some content rich material that you can share on social media to get people interested in your book. Let's talk about what a media kit is and what it isn't. And as Joel said, a lot of people are using it correctly, incorrectly, so pay attention to this. A media kit is branded hype free marketing materials. It is not a free ad that screams, buy my book. Your media kit is collateral material for journalists especially. It's not a carrot that you dangle in front of the media instead of pitching a story idea. And I get this all the time. I get people saying to me, um, there's a reporter who works for thus and such a magazine and she reviews books and I want to send her my media kit. How do I send it? Do I send it as an attachment to an email or do I just send her the media kit link where she can find my media kit and learn about my book? And my answer is none of the above. You don't do that because a media kit is something that is offered. It is not something that is sent unsolicited. 
You never send it unsolicited. Busy people, I don't care who they are, are not going to take the time to drop what they're doing, open your media kit, look through all the materials, read about your book, read your bios, and then figure out if they're interested. If you are pitching a journalist, you have got to hook them with a customized pitch. And if they're interested and they say, yes, I'm interested, then you offer them your media kit to make their job easy. Never ever send it unsolicited. Your media kit is a work in progress. It's the type of a thing that you're going to go back to over time and update as you start to win book awards, as your bio changes, as you start to get more book reviews. It is never the type of marketing material that you set and forget. You're always going to want to be updating it. I think it's a good idea to revisit your kit say every three or four months, and I gotta tell you, just with my own website, I'm astonished at how fast my own website gets out of date, even after just a couple of months. And so revisit your kit periodically with an eye toward adding some better content and some better news items about you. As I said, as you start to win awards and as you start to get great blurbs and great testimonials and terrific reviews. So that's how to use it and how not to use it. So now let's take a peek inside the Ideal Media Kit and see all of the items one by one that it should include and how to create them. Item number one, your author bios. And notice this does not say bio singular. It says bio plural. Your bio should be written exactly like a new story would be written. So I don't want to see any words in here like fabulous, fantastic, um, uh, any words that are hypey words, this is not the place to use it in an author bio because you want a journalist to be able to cut and paste your bio right from your media kit and pop it right into a story. And they're not going to use hypey words like we all love to use. So don't put any hype in your author bio. Use your bio not only to inform, but also to have fun. And I'll show you in a minute exactly how to do that. You are going to offer a bio in different lengths to make their job easy because not everybody who is going to be cutting your and pasting your bio wants a 500 word bio. Some of them are going to want a bio that's much shorter. And remember I told you what your number one goal is in this media kit? Do any of you remember? What's your number one goal? in this media kit. Remember what I said? What's your number one goal? Type it into the chat box if you remember. Yes, Sue said, make it easy for them. You're going to make their job easy. And you're going to do that with your bio. So let's take a look at the different size author bios that you will need. First, you will need a two-line bio of about 140 characters. Does 140 characters ring a bell with any of you? What, what, what is 140 characters? What would this be perfect for? If you have a 140-character bio and somebody wants to cut and paste it, where might they put this 140-character bio? If you're on social media, you should know this. Talene, Sue, Carolyn, Ian, Wynn, Elaine, Ruth Marie, good, you're all right. On Twitter, Twitter has a limit of, um, I, think it's, I think it's somewhat higher right now, including the link, but keep a nice short two-line bio. You might only get two lines if you're writing an article and you know the editor might only want a short little two-line bio so you better have one ready in the media kit. Next, a short bio of about 50 words. The third one would be a medium bio of about 100 words and your last one will be a long bio of from 400 to 600 words and in this longer bio you have much more room 
to to really have fun with it and, and include some um, some maybe some personal information in here. I I the bio at my website I think is about 500 words and I include some personal factoids in there that I like Joni Mitchell and Laura Nero and. People read that because I will get people emailing me occasionally and they'll say, oh, I didn't know you like Joni Mitchell. I like Joni Mitchell. And I wonder, how do they know that? Oh, yeah, they were at my website and they read my long bio. So use um, offer bios in these four lengths. There are two extras that I want you to include and the first one is a speaker introduction, a generic speaker introduction of about 250 to 300 words if you are out there on the speaking circuit. And I want to tell all of you right now, speaking is an excellent way to start gathering email addresses, to build an email list. It is a fabulous way to sell books because from every speaking engagement, from most of them, you should be able to sell books from the back of the room. Do not let your host write your speaker introduction or it will be a disaster. Trust me, it will be really boring. I learned this the hard way. You want to write your own introduction. And the second item I want you to include in your media kit is five fun facts you didn't know about me. Um, I have on the screen here that it's optional. I'm going to change my mind on this. I want to make this mandatory that you include five fun facts you didn't know about me. So let me tell you a fun fact about me that you don't know. Um, my girlfriend and I are avid 500 rummy players and we play every couple of weeks and we are cutthroat players. We've been joking for the longest time um, about who gets to wear the crown, the winner gets to wear the crown. So I went on Amazon and I bought this cheap little $9 this little tiara that has all this bling on it and and the winner gets to wear the crown the night that we play and at the end of the night whoever wins gets to take the crown home with her and then when we meet again for the next game the winner gets to wear the crown on her head and it's just a stupid little fun fact about me and I have um, a couple more at my website and keep it fun you want a really fun fact that's going to catch people's attention. So I want to ask Joe to come back on the line, Joel, because I know he has a couple fun facts about himself. So Joel, unmute yourself and tell us a fun fact about you. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, a fun fact about me is I am a, uh, an expert at low-carb baking. I never knew that. I only knew that you were an expert at, you make some of the best biscotti in the world. Do you do, do. do you make that, low carb biscotti? Absolutely true. You know, but I've switched over to low carb baking because of a diet I'm on, and it's a completely different world and very challenging, Joe, and I want to tell you because you can't use any flour. There you go. So <laughs> if I were doing, if I were Joel, I would not only share the fact that he's an expert at low-carb baking, but I would give two or three of your best low-carb recipes that you make, and certainly one of them is biscotti, because I know that about you. So what are two more? What are two more well, things that you make that are dynamite? I've, I've got an awesome uh, triple chocolate cookie recipe that okay. people can't believe. It's just low-carb, gluten-free, and sugar-free. And uh, I'm also working on perfecting my peanut butter cookie recipe right now because okay. peanut butter cookies are something that everybody needs to have in their kitchen. Oh, absolutely. You sold me. So Diana, <laughs> who's on the line, here's a fun fact. Diana says, so the fact that I once performed surgery on a 19-year-old piranha might be interesting, even though it has nothing to do with my children's book. Diana, I don't care if it <laughs> has anything to do with your children's book. That is a wonderful, wonderful fun fact. Um, Stephen says, here's a fun fact about me. I did the post-production breathing for the fighter scenes in the blockbuster movie Top Gun. <laughs> I love it. Okay, these are all great fun facts. They don't have to have anything to do with your book. But here's why I love fun facts. If a journalist is, um, is um, um, writing about you, 
they might ask you about a fun fact and slip it into your story. And fun facts really help bring out your personality. <laughs> D.S. Edwards says, I'm an expert at calling elk, and I had one step on me once. Um, when this says, I once sang at Carnegie Hall. These are all great. These are all great. So, in, so think about four more and include them. At, you can do it at the end of your bio, just five, or you can make a separate sheet out of it at, uh, when you post these at your website. Okay, let's go on to item number two. These would be, this is a press release for either fiction or nonfiction. The headline can be up to 20 words, even though newspapers and magazines write really short headlines. Your headlines don't have to be that short. They can, you can include a, a subhead, which is a little bit longer. It's in smaller type right under the headline. You can include a dateline, which is the city and state where you are located, plus the date the press release was written. Nothing makes me crazier than to come upon a press release that doesn't have a date on it because I have no idea when the news took place. It also should include a pithy author quote, something that's really killer, something that really gives people information about the book. I don't want to hear any BS quotes like, I am so thrilled and delighted that I wrote this book. That's, that's what I call a BS quote. We don't want any of that stuff. Um, I'd like to see an about the author section in your press release, an about the book section. Remember, these are all things that can be cut and pasted right from the press release into a story that somebody is writing about you. I'd like you to explain to people in the press release how the person reading it can get their hands on a review copy and where people from the media can contact you for a media interview. I also want to see that all important contact information. So, let's talk about a press release for fiction. These are hard, these are a little bit more difficult to write than press releases for nonfiction. So let, let's talk about a couple things that these should include. You can write about, how do you lead a press release? So what do you write about? Well, you have a couple of options. You can write about your key character in your novel. Um, I have also seen fiction authors write about the emotional angle to your book. There's another thing you can lead off with. You can lead off with the target audience for your fiction. And I want to pop a sample of a press release for fiction onto the screen here. I'm working off two monitors and I'm going to slip this over here. And this is an actual press release that was written by Deb McLeod for her fiction novel. And what I've done is I've taken this release here, and again, I'm not going to go over this line by line. If you want to watch the replay, you can call the replay up and study this in more detail, the video replay. But over here up in the upper left-hand corner, she's got her contact information. She has not only her name, but her email address, her office telephone number, and the two websites for her book. She has her headline. Right up here, it's a two-line headline. She has a subhead right underneath it in smaller type. And here's her dateline right over here, Denver, Colorado, May 15th, 2014. She leads it off by talking a little bit, by giving a quick summary about the book. And then she goes into a longer description about the book. And here is her author quote up high in the press release right here. And she says, she says, I wanted to write a story about what might happen if the unseen became real. And the reason that you wrote your book is a really good thing to put into your quote. All of you, you many of you, have very compelling reasons about why you wrote your book. And I like to see that in an author quote. Look at this. She repeats the contact information here. And she tells people right here that pre-orders will be available in June of 2014. You come down below. Here is her paragraph about the author right here. She has a call to action 
right here. She says, meet the cast of the Julia set, read the first chapter, and discover the world of angels, and read about metaphysics or creative writing at one of these two websites. And down here, you'll see these three hash marks right here. This signifies the end of the press release. It tells journalists, journalists especially, they know these hashtags mean, I have now hit the end of the release. She gives a slightly longer about the author box right here at the end of the release. Look at this. She repeats the contact information. I can't stress this enough. You can't put your website address, your telephone number, or your email address too many times in your press release. And I see so many people, authors, hiding behind contact information, and I don't want you to do that. She includes, again, a short blurb about the book. You come down here, and she tells you where to go for review copies. You can contact her at this telephone number, or you can email her. And she says, when requesting a review copy, please provide your street address as well because some people might want the hard copy version of the book. And if they do, you're going to need to know where to ship it to them. Okay? Then she also says, if you'd like to receive this information as a Word document, please let us know. And those are the key things that you put in a press release for fiction. Press releases for nonfiction are a lot easier to write because the key thing that you need to concentrate on in the lead, in the headline, is the solution to the problem that your book is about. This is the best angle. The problem solution is what I think is the logical way to write a press release for nonfiction. You also want to excerpt from three to seven tips, put them directly in the press release. You want that press release to be content rich. And you also want to flag the target audience for your release. So let's take a look at a press release for nonfiction. This was written by one of my clients and my longtime publicity hounds, Dr. Marie, Marlena Corcoran. She wrote a book for international students on how they can get admitted to top U.S. colleges. Upper left-hand corner, there's her contact information up here. Here's her headline. Look at this. She's flagging the target audience right here. International students, colon, what are your chances to getting admitted to top U.S. colleges? I love that headline. Here's her subhead, what you need to know to compete for a seat in the Ivy League and beyond. Here's her dateline. She's in Munich, Germany. That's the date it was written. And then she contacts on, she concentrates on the problem right here. Every year, perfectly talented and capable international students apply to U.S. colleges and shoot themselves in the foot. Many other international students are intrigued by the idea of studying in, U in the U.S., but they're discouraged by the lack of information or downright disinformation about the process. Then she offers her book right here as the solution to the problem. I love her quote. If you think grades are all it takes to get into the Ivy League, you haven't looked at the admit rates this year. Harvard admitted one student in 20, and Brown turned away four out of five applicants who were tops in their class. European kids are often underinformed about what it really takes to get into the best colleges. I love this quote. It is not a BS quote. She doesn't tell you how honored she is to write the books. She gives you hard, cold facts about the ugly statistics about getting into Ivy League colleges. Okay? Then she gives you some information about herself right here. And here's where she offers some really meaty material. Dr. Corcoran offers these six tips on how you and your teenager can stand out. And what she has done is she has excerpted and put in bold, I think she's got seven tips here. So she gives the tip its own line, and then she gives a little longer explanation right under the bold face tip. 
And let's see how many of these she's got. She's got six of them, six tips that come right from her book. Then here's her call to action for a free report on the 10 biggest mistakes international students make. You are going to want to visit um, athena.mentor.com and you are going to take advantage of her free offer. Here are her free hashtags that say, I'm at the end of my press release. And she has got her about the author section, and then you come down further, and she has got her about the book section, and she has got her review copies and media interviews, and she has got her foreign phone number, and she's got her email address, no doubt, on how to get in touch with her. That's how you write a press release for nonfiction. Okay. Let's take a look at the next item. This is item number three in your media kit. It's your book synopsis. And it is the most important information about your book on only one sheet. If people looked at any one thing to get an overview of what your book's about, it's going to be the book synopsis. It is great for scanners and for people in a hurry. It is going to include your synopsis in four different lengths. It's also going to include something called five points of interest. What's a point of interest? Well, a point of interest could be anything that you want it to be. A point of interest could be the fact that the book takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana in the 1930s. That could be a point of interest. A point of interest could be an interesting um, factoid about the time period where the book takes place. The point of interest could be something like um, a fiction author I know actually names his fiction characters after fans of his novels. He has these little contests where he'll say something like, if you want me to name my next character in my, you know, a character in my next science fiction novel after you, tell me and tell me a little bit about yourself. And he once had a, ref, a, um, a minister say, I want you to name one of your characters after me. I love your sci-fi novels. And the, and the author actually named a chaplain after this real live minister. So a point of the interest could be anything interesting about your book that you want to tell people about. It will also include book details and purchasing information, all on one handy sheet. Number four, you are going to want to include a sample chapter. The sample chapter will include a cover image of the book, it will include your title, it will include the sample chapter, and the best sample chapter to start with is usually the very first chapter because it's going to hook people immediately and it's going to keep them, it's going to want them to see the rest of the book. And if, you, if your sample chapter happened to be sample chapter, let's say number 15, they might not be as engrossed because you're going to be introducing all these things in chapter 15 that are going to be foreign to them because they haven't read chapters 1 through 14. So start with the first chapter and make that your sample chapter. This should also include the table of contents of your book so they can see what comes next. And some of you have some very enticing chapter titles. You will link to your Amazon reviews and you are also going to include where to buy links because Amazon is not the only place where people can buy your book. Some people may want to buy them offline. Tell us which bookstores they are available in. Item number five, sample interview questions. If you are doing interviews with broadcast media, like radio and TV people, they are very busy people. And this guy in the light blue shirt on the right is the host 
and the guy in the dark blue shirt on the left is the author. And the author always wants the host to read the book before they do the interview. And I'm going to tell you right now, almost nobody is going to read your book. They are way too busy. And if you can walk into the station with a ready-made list of about six or eight questions that they can ask you, because they're jumping from one program to the next, they have just gotten rid of a guest who's just walked out the door and you've just walked in, you've sat down, you put the headset on, they mic you up, they're all set to go. They will love it if you can hand them a list of ready-made interview questions. If you're doing a radio interview by phone, you can ask the host if they would like you to email them a list of questions from your media kit and they will be very happy you offered. Now this doesn't guarantee that they're going to use all the questions or any of the questions, but it gives them a little safety net to fall back on if, if they've been working 12 hours that day and they're dead tired and they can't even think straight. They can just look right on your list of questions and ask you the questions that you have right there. And the other big advantage is they're questions that you're going to be able to answer. So this is the big advantage to having a list of sample interview questions. Item number six, book review excerpts. You want anybody reading your media kit to see excerpts of the very best book reviews that people are leaving. It could be on Amazon. It could be bloggers who are reviewing your book. It could be any reviews that you've gotten from um, Kirkus, for example, or um, if you're lucky enough, Publishers Weekly, or what is the other one? Is it Blue Ink? Joel, is that the name of it? Is it called Blue, Blue Ink Reviews? I think that's the name of it. That sounds familiar, Joan. Right. There are some, place, some places where you can pay for reviews, and there's um, a lot of controversy in the publishing community about whether or not you should pay to get a review like a Kirkus review. I come from the school that says if you can get a paid review and it happens to be a good review, and again, there's no guarantee that if you pay for a review that it's going to be a good review, but if you pay, for, let's say, for a Kirkus review and they give you a good review, I want to see you excerpt parts of that review for your media kit. Number seven, a contact information sheet. You need to give people every single opportunity to connect with you. I want to see an email address, a telephone number. You don't have to put a mobile number in your media kit. Um, I don't include my mobile number in a media kit because I don't want the whole world to know how to reach, my, reach me on my mobile phone. Um, if you do not give a mobile number and you happen to have a uh, journalist who wants to interview you and they're interested in getting your mobile number because they might want to text you, go for it. Give it to them. Don't worry about them giving that mobile number to the whole world. They're not going to do that. A lot of journalists, oddly enough, will do interviews by text. So you should be ready with a mobile number. Um, give them your Twitter handle. Show them how to connect with you on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Pinterest, on Goodreads every single way possible. And I want to stop here and say, if you don't have this information at your website, and I am so disappointed to see the vast majority of authors whose websites I go to, I can't find a telephone number, I can't find an email address, I have no idea how to get in touch with you. And I see authors who say, but I don't want to be bothered by phone numbers in the, by phone calls in the middle of the night. I don't want people emailing me. I don't want people spamming me. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what if there's a meaning planner who wants you to, to come in to fill the space of a speaker who just got the flu and couldn't show up at a speaking event? and they want you to fill in. And they have no idea how to get in touch with you. You have just blown an opportunity to get a, to get a speaking engagement. And I want to see a phone number and an email address on every single 
page of your website. That includes a shipping address. And if you don't want people stalking your kids, then for heaven's sakes, rent a post office box so that people can send you a check if they want to buy your book. Not everybody wants to buy online. And the contact information sheet will give people all the ways to get in touch with you. Photos. I want to see a photo of your book cover. I want to see a headshot of you. And I want to see an what we call environmental photos. This is my friend Edward Vilga. He wrote the book Downward Dog. It's a, it's a fiction book about a, um, a yoga instructor in New York City. And Edward offers this wonderful shot of him with his dog, Belle. And he also offers a shot of him on his hardwood floor in his bare feet. Now, this makes perfect sense for him because he's a yoga instructor. And anybody who knows anything about yoga knows that you do yoga in your bare feet. And this is a great, very crisp, clear, black and white environmental shot um, that anybody could use if they are at his website accessing his media kit. It doesn't only have to be a standard headshot. Joel, do you want to give a couple of words or some advice from a book designer about well-designed covers? Yeah, you know, uh, cover is going to be really important. And as you can see, we're including uh, book covers in our media kit. The book cover is going to be what people see online when they go searching for your book. I mean, the book cover is really the brand of your book, so it really pays to put some time and attention into it. Uh, I pay a lot of attention to this, obviously, but uh, I did like Edward Vilga's cover for Downward Dog quite a bit. You know, it really combines two different kinds of covers because the designer has created like a, a flat background to show off the type. And here, obviously, they're using the author's name as the chief draw because he's very well known in yoga circles. And you could probably put Edward Vilga on there and publish any number of books. But then, in addition to the flat blue panel, that really is absolutely the best thing to show that title and, and author name, then they vignetted out that panel and shown the uh, New York City skyline, which really gives you, um, kind of, it places you in a specific place. And uh, obviously, Edward is a New Yorker, so this is totally appropriate for him, and uh, it really adds another dimension to the cover. So I, I like this cover, and I think it was well done. I love the cover, and when I first saw it, I couldn't stop looking at it. Um, and also, notice the A in the word downward is the down, if you know anything about yoga, that's the downward dog position when you're down on your hands like that. And I love the design. And Joel and I and many other publishing experts, we see so many authors coming to us with covers that are just horrible. They scream, I'm self-published. And so if you work with any of us and we don't like your cover, we're going to tell you. Because I just think that if you hire a professional designer to design a cover, it is going to be money well spent, especially if you want to sell your book in bookstores. If they see that your cover looks like crap, and if it screams self-published, you don't have a chance of getting into bookstores. OK, number nine, a cheat sheet or a checklist. This is content-rich material that ties into the topic of your book. For fiction or nonfiction, I don't care which of the two you write, you need to have some kind of a cheat sheet or a checklist. Magazines love these because they're short. They, the checklist might include um, nine ways to fix, nine ways to troubleshoot an office printer that doesn't work. I have seen magazines use these short little items in holes that they have on a page that they need to fill. They may have a long article that has maybe a four-inch hole on it, and they need to fill the hole. And if they happen to have a checklist from you, even if the checklist doesn't pertain to the, whole, to the, to the article that's on the page, they may pluck it out and use it. That's in. Make sure it's short. 
Um, nine tips for finding the perfect pet. This would be a fabulous cheat sheet or a checklist to offer if you happen to have a fiction book about a cat or a children's book about a turtle or a bird. There's the printer idea. How to fix your printer. A nine-step cheat sheet. This would be great for nonfiction authors who have written books um, for, let's say, an entrepreneur like me who has a home office. Offer a cheat sheet or a checklist. Think about, for you fiction authors, think of a problem that your key character has and offer a cheat sheet or a checklist on how to solve the problem. Keep it really short. It needs to have a headline, tips, and a call to action at the end. And the call to action can be whatever you want it to be. You can lead people to your Amazon page. You can lead them back to your website. You can lead them to an opt-in box where you're offering some kind of a free giveaway in exchange for their email address. It can be whatever you want it to be. But be sure to include a call to action. Item number 10. A speaker one sheet. I want to see all of you out on the speaking circuit, even if the only place where you're speaking is your local library. Your speaker one sheet is specifically for event and meeting planners. It includes, your, it explains what your value to your audience is. This is a very old, old copy of my speaker one sheet. It includes your programs right here down the right hand side or anywhere on the sheet. It includes a little bit, a little bit of information about your book. It includes testimonials from happy people who have brought you in to speak to their audiences. Do not put a fee schedule on your speaker one sheet. If you are selling speaking engagements and you want a fee to come in to speak and you're not going to you're not going to demand a fee if you are not a good speaker, if you're just getting out on the speaker circuit. I would speak for free as much as you have to before you start asking for a fee. Never, ever put your fee schedule on your one sheet. Your one sheet is designed to get the meeting planner to call you. And when they ask you, what's your fee, the next question out of your mouth is going to be, what are you looking for? Because if they want a half-day workshop, your fee is going to be higher than if they want a quick 20-minute presentation for their local rotary group. So no fees. Also, include that all-important contact information right down here in the corner. So how long does all of this take? to put together, it can take several weeks or more to gather together all of the information that you need for your media kit. And the other big problem that I see with these, people want to, uh, to um, quick um, do them really fast, and you're going to need time to rewrite all your materials if you're doing this by yourself. And if you're using a graphic artist like I used, when I did that speaker one sheet, you're going to need to build in more time to work with your graphic artist. And all of this might take a couple of months, and you don't want to wait until you are ready to launch your book to start to think about putting together this media kit, because it's going to take you a really long time. And you don't have several weeks to spend, or heaven forbid, several months to spend putting this together. So that's why Joel and I are going to help shave months off the tedious job with a product that we have created called Quick and Easy Media Kit Templates. And I'm going to turn it over to Joel to explain what this includes and how it will help you. Well, I'm happy to do that, Joan, because I love this product. I mean, I've used it myself. I know that sounds crazy. But uh, I've used it more than once, and you know the the problem is let me get rid of that sound. The problem is that um, you know authors don't typically start thinking about this until they're deep in the process and getting ready to publish their book, and that's really too late. 
because uh, Joan walked through all this stuff and it does take time to put it together. Now, if you went out to hire somebody to create a media kit for you, you're probably going to pay, I would guess, about $2,500. Uh, even just having a press release written, uh, the last time I priced it out, uh, I got prices of around $400 just to write a press release. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's now, accurate. That, that, that's, yeah, I, you know, that's what's out in the market. It's no joke. And uh, so what Joan and I wanted to do was to kind of use Joan's expertise to put these tools into your hands. So this is what we came up with. And this, uh, the Quick and Easy Media Kit Templates is a complete solution. It comes with 15 uh, Microsoft Word files that are pre-formatted templates. And the thing about this is you don't have to worry or wonder about what format it should be in. Is it going to look the way it's supposed to look when it hits the book reviewer's desk or the book buyer at Costco or whoever it is you're trying to uh, uh, get interested in your book? Not only that, we have samples of each of these pieces that have already been completed by real live authors. I find the samples really helpful because I can look at them and say, oh yeah, that's what Joan means. This is how you actually do it. Uh, we've also included photo templates uh, because sometimes people get confused about what kind of photos uh, media are looking for. And obviously there's a difference if you're going to be uh, having an article written about you in a magazine or an article uh, on a website. So we provided those too. But the real core of this, of this product are these pre-formatted Microsoft Word templates. Uh, now, here you can see an example from the guide that comes with the Media Kit template product. And the guide has all of Joan's expert instructions. And what you're looking at here is a sample of the press release uh, guide. And this is uh, the template itself, but this version is inside the uh, guidebook. And you can see there's a lot of red text on there. The red text is the, uh, are Joan's instructions. And she, as you can see, she guides you through each item. I mean, even down to the city, state, and date line, which you would think would be the most prosaic thing possible. But no, Joan, Joan is going to give you guidance at every step of the way. You know, having this uh, media kit template means that if you're a writer, you should be able to sit down and create your own media kit um, it's going to take you a little time. You've got to write bios. You've got to write press release. You've got to write, you know, whatever pieces you need. Now, obviously, uh, you're not maybe going to need every one of these pieces when you get started, but they're all going to be there for you when you do need them. What else we got here, Jen? All right, so what are the templates that are included? And like I say, you're not, this is like a, a restaurant menu. You know, you may want one appetizer, one entree, or one dessert. You're not going to order, give me one of everything on the menu because that just doesn't make sense. So um, you can see here that we've got uh, samples of different author bios at different lengths. And I get asked for these all the time. You know, somebody wants a short introduction. Somebody else wants a full bio for a, a book they're doing. So it's really good to have these ready to go. You don't want to have to start, sit down and start writing new ones every time somebody asks you. Now we've got press release templates, and this is maybe the most important piece in your media kit. And Joan's got samples of both fiction and nonfiction press releases. You're also going to find templates for a book synopsis, sample chapter, sample interview questions. But wait, there's more. We've got a sample of a book review excerpt. This can be really uh, powerful because, you know, the editors and book reviewers are pretty busy people. And like Joan said, the easier you can make their job, the more likely you are to find success at getting media attention. A contact information sheet, that's really just to let people know how to contact you. The photo templates that I mentioned that tell you what resolution and what size you should do your photos. Uh, cheat sheet. What's the cheat sheet about, Jim? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. It's a, it just, it's a template. I can't remember, Joel, honestly. No, there's so much packed into this product. Yeah, there's so much it's in here. It's mind-boggling. And uh, uh, 
look, even a speaker one sheet, I mean, that isn't really necessarily even part of an author's media kit, but like Joan says, speaking is one of the best ways to build your author platform. I found that. I love speaking, and I, I just came back from the San Francisco Writers Conference where I did three different sessions, met a lot of people, made some great connections. So having that speaker one sheet, being able to um, show people that you are professional about doing this really helps a lot. Uh, we got more, though. Yeah. Joan has also included, and, and this is really powerful, the sample book review requests. Now, I've been running book review campaigns for longer than I'd like to tell you, but at least dating back to the 1980s. And I'm a big believer in book reviews because I think, you know, if I tell you, hey, this, is a, this book is the best book on kayaking ever written, you know, I'm just promoting myself. But if somebody else tells you this is the best book on kayaking ever written, that's really powerful. And, uh, you know, getting those book reviews, knowing how to do it, knowing how to approach the reviewers is absolutely critical. How about a cover letter to bookstores? If you're looking at bookstores to either do an event for you or stock your book, you know, how do you talk to the buyers at the bookstores? If you've never done that before, you know, you could use a little help. We got a sell sheet for national sales, and that would relate to selling to big chains, um, and a sell sheet for live events that you can use to also take orders in the back of the room. I personally know an author who told me that she had sold over four million dollars worth of books and products at the back of the room just from her speaking engagements. That was over a ten-year period, but if you do the math. That's a pretty amazing income just from speaking and selling stuff in the back of the room. So every one of these in here is a, serves a practical purpose. They all play their role in helping you uh, show the media and book buyers and other interested people how your book entertains people, solves their problems, or what the basic appeal of your book is. What's next, Joe? All right, so here's what we did. We put all of this together into the quick and easy media kit templates. We've added as a bonus Joan's uh, terrific report, tips for rewriting your boring author bio. Yeah, now that's actually not nice, but the fact of the matter is that but it's Joan, true. And I, <laughs> Joan and I know that 99% of the author bios out there are absolutely boring. You know, uh, I, I grew up in uh, Elderberry, Massachusetts. I had a little cat that was my best friend. I mean, come on. Nobody's interested. What they're interested in is what can you do for me. So learning how to write an interesting author bio is really very cool. So there's 15 Microsoft Word templates, the special report. We usually sell this all day, every day on our Author Toolkits website for $97, and people love it. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of these, uh, maybe thousands. But during the next five days, a special promotion to go with this live webinar, we've dropped the price by 30% to $67. And, you know, I think that's an incredible price. It's very aggressive. There's no, you can't even get somebody to write a press release for you for $67. And here we're going to put all of the education and tools you need to put together a media kit. And maybe you're only going to use like the press release and the uh, bios and a couple of other items. Even so, that's going to put you way ahead of most authors who aren't going to do this at all. Trust me, they're not going to do it. Now, I also realized that a lot of this is new to indie authors. You know, maybe you're a school teacher or an engineer or an electrician and you've written a book and now you're trying to figure out how you're going to market that book and get it to people. But some people need more training. So we created another version. So we added to that uh, the standard uh, media kit, uh, toolkit for indie authors, we add, Joan has added a whole bunch of training. If you feel like you need more training to really put this to good use, this is where you want to go. Because what we have here is uh, three 
amazing training videos, like how to write headlines. <laughs> That's worth its weight in gold, trust me. How to sell books by the truckload, and how to use social media to connect with journalists, also worth its weight in gold. It's only a it sells for $50, but imagine if you could get on social media and start interacting with journalists who are interested in what you are writing about. Man, that is 75% of your battle right there. But we've also included 89 reasons to write a press release because people, you know, usually they write a press release around the launch of the book, but the press release is a really great vehicle for getting your name, your book title, and your website into newspapers, magazines, blog articles, all kinds of places. And you can write a press release for lots of reasons. You don't have to just write one when you launch the book. Uh, we've also got 27 book review and recommendation sites to help you get more book reviews and a copy of Joan's ebook, How to Be a Kick-Butt Publicity Hound. Now, if you were to add all that up, and these are products that Joan sells on her website every day, that's $407 total. And just an, almost an amazing education in how to work the media. But during the promotion, you can get the whole shooting match for $97. I think that's unbelievable, to be honest. And uh, <clears throat> But five days only, we are releasing this product for only $97. Now, I think between these two, I mean, if you are, feel comfortable with uh, media, if you've done this a little bit before and you just want those templates and Joan's guidance, you know, that $67 standard package is really a phenomenal value. If, the, if you're kind of new to this, I would really recommend getting the uh, Plus Edition. It's only $30 more, but it delivers hundreds of dollars in targeted training to help you actually put this product to use. Now we also have another version of the Quick and Easy Media Kit templates, and this might be interesting for people who really like this kind of thing and realize that, hey, creating a media kit isn't that hard. Now I'm here to tell you that, you know, 95% of authors don't have a media kit. And that's too bad for them. I really I, I wish they did. But if you're somebody who actually likes doing this stuff and finds that you have a knack for it, we will sell you our commercial edition. It's the exact same as the plus edition, but we license you to actually use it to create media kits for other people. Now, if you were paying attention, you will remember a few minutes ago I mentioned the fact that if you went to somebody, you'd probably pay about $2,500 to have a media kit made. Now suppose you could go to your indie author friends who don't have $2,500 and say, look, I will create this media kit for you for, I don't know, $300, whatever it is that you want to charge. With our commercial edition, uh, you're licensed to do that as many times as you want. You could be creating media kits for lots of authors. That would be good for those authors, and that would be very good for you. And the commercial edition is only $147. The first time you write a media kit for somebody else, or even just a press release, you're going to pay for, the, uh, the, for this whole package with all the training, all the templates that can be re reused over and over again. That, so that's of interest to somebody who wanted to do this like a business. And so we call it a, it's kind of like a, a, a media kit business in a box. If you've got everything you need to help people connect with journalists, create their media kit, and uh, look, it's a pretty nice little side gig. Uh, you could be making several hundred dollars a month. And you know, if you're an author, you know that's hard to generate that kind of money just from your book sales. So having something extra on the side is really, really powerful. So what's our last slide, John? Okay, so here this summarizes the whole offer that we're making to you today. And I really appreciate people sticking with this. There's a lot of information in this. We will have a replay. You can see that the uh, page is at authortoolkits.com slash media kit. And um, <clears throat> you can see we've got all three versions. The standard edition at $67. That plus edition that adds all those training elements at $97. And the commercial edition at $147.
So that's what we've got you to offer on offer today. The sale will run until Monday at midnight. Well, a minute before midnight <laughs> because of the software. And uh, don't wait till 11.58 to decide on whether you want to acquire this for your publishing uh, goals because uh, a media kit, book reviews, attention, you know, articles in magazines and newspapers, this is the kind of stuff that really sells books. You can't compete with the media by getting on Twitter or doing Facebook updates. Even if you do 10 or 12 Facebook statuses a day, it, it's not going to help. It's really, uh, you know, Facebook ads are good if you know how to do them, but you could spend a lot of money on Facebook ads while you're training yourself. Uh, no, the media has access to millions and millions of eyeballs. TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, websites, bloggers. Just think of the audiences these people have. So if you have a book that's of interest to anybody, you know, you, this, this whole package is going to allow you to uh, make contact with those people and get the kind of attention your book deserves. I think it's a phenomenal author. Offer. I think Joan has done just an amazing job packaging up her years of expertise and making it available to you. So that's what we've got. Um, I think we have time for some questions. Joel, before we take questions, can we mention two things? These are frequent questions we get. Can you address the issue of PC versus Macintosh? Absolutely. The um, uh, Microsoft Word files uh, are completely cross-platform compatible. I actually have a, uh, a Windows PC sitting here in my office. I usually work on Macs. You can open these files on either platform with no problem. There's no translation. There's no nothing. They just open exactly the same on both platforms, and we have Microsoft to thank for that because their formats are completely cross-platform compatible. So uh, what, techie, what techie things do people know how to do? What, what techie tasks do people need to know how to do to be able to use the templates? Yeah, I want, well, this is great, John. Thank you for the question. Um, if you're curious whether you think you have the technical skills to use this, I strongly suggest you go over to authortoolkits.com slash media kit, and you're going to see a bunch of uh, information on the page about the product, but you're also going to find some videos there. And in one of the videos, you're going to watch me fill out one of these templates as I do it. It takes about five minutes. And uh, uh, the one I filled out was the author bios uh, template. And... Um, you know, I wrote out my author bios first, and then I used the template. Now, there is one skill you're going to need in order to do this, and that's the skill called copy and paste. Now, I can't believe there's anybody on this call who doesn't know how to copy and paste, but that's really the only technical skill you need. And that's the beauty of a template, by the way. The template's a completely pre-packaged file. It's completely formatted. It uses the system font, so you're never going to get, you know, a no font missing message or something like that. And they're completely formatted to look the way they should look. All you have to do is add your text. And you've got a professional looking, finished uh, uh, item that you can use right away. So, yeah, no real technical skill needed, just an ability to use a word processor. The other thing we did after this product was created was we rounded up some beta testers, actual authors, and we gave them the product and said, now go use it and then come back and tell us what you think. And we heard an interesting comment from all of them. They all said, we love the product, but boy, we sure wish that you would have included some samples in here so that we could see what each one of these items is supposed to look like. And I thought, my heavens, why didn't I think of that? So we, I went and created a sample of what every single item is supposed to look like, and that was fabulous feedback from our testers. And so doing the beta test was really valuable because it makes the product that much more valuable for you. Yeah, and uh, I also had a question about the payments. All of these prices are one-time fees. 
That's it. You buy it, you own it, it's yours. Uh, the licensing is there uh, because we wanted to make this commercial edition, so we have to specifically license you to reuse it over and over again for other people. The other products, the standard edition and the plus edition, when you get them, they're licensed to you. You can use them as many times as you want for as many books as you want uh, for as long as you want. But they're for you and your books. In other words, it's a single author package. That's what the license is. So if you want to do it for other people, you need that commercial license, which, by the way, if you look at it, is basically on sale for half price right now. I mean, it's normally $300, and it's a pretty good deal at $300 because, you know, we're giving you something that you could make money with. But uh, for the for until Monday, and I, I think, you know, we may have reduced that too much. But I can't go back now because there it is on the screen. So uh, that's what it is. It's $147 for that commercial bundle. Uh, we will be emailing out a link to a replay of this webinar uh, later today or tonight. So watch for that. And um, if you have any other questions, put them in the question box. Let's see what else we've got. I have a couple questions here. Somebody wants to know, she's got 10 books written. What, how does she handle that on her speaker one sheet? Um, I wouldn't put 10 book covers on there because I would use that space to communicate the value of what your, your presentations are to your audience and I would also use this, that valuable real estate for testimonials. I would certainly say you're the author of 10 books including and then take the one book that you really want to highlight and put the cover of that might be your most recent book and put the cover there right on the author one sheet but I wouldn't put 10 covers that's too much real estate um, will there be a sample for the checklist cheat sheet there's a sample in the product there's a sample of all 10 items okay um, here's a question from uh, Blaine who says the advice was not to pitch with the media kit. Yes. I'm not sure where that came from, Joan. Uh, and he, Blaine goes on to say obscurity is the prime enemy of all booksellers. So explain again how the kit would help get the word out about having, having a kit. Sitting on a lonely okay. site with little traffic doesn't seem like a great way to monetize. You are absolutely right about that, Blaine. Yes. You're not going to, okay, first of all, let's talk about what to do with the media kit after it's published. You are going to have a digital media kit available at your website, and it could be under a button, under a navigational button from your homepage called Media Room, Media Kit, Media Buzz, and you're going to take each item and put it and give it its own page. And Joel does a fabulous job of this at his site. If you go to, is it thebookdesigner.com? Joel, is that your website? It is thebookdesigner.com. And you have a button, is, it, is there a navigational button up at the top called Media Room or Media Kit? Uh, no, it's a little bit buried, to be honest, uh, John. It's something okay. I got to go to the main so menu, but uh, it's... Just do a Google search, search for, and I do this all the time, Joel Friedlander Media Kit. And you will see that he has individual items of his media kit all lined up on one page. And then he also gives the visitor, I believe you give the visitor the option of having it sent to them as a PDF file. Well, the option correct? you have there is... Uh, the way I've set it up, Joan, is that each individual piece is available as a download, and then there's a zip file with a whole thing in it. So if you just that's want to right. download everything, that's a single download. If you just want a photo of the book cover, you don't have to download the whole thing. You just download the photo of the book cover. Exactly. So that gives you tremendous flexibility. So the fact that your media kit is at your website doesn't mean a hill of beans in terms of your ability to get publicity unless you are pitching story ideas, content, sharing information to specific journalists, to reviewers, to bloggers, and to people who you want to cover you. 
okay? Let's say that you want to write a guest blog post for a blogger. You would go over to that blog, make sure the blog is a good fit for you, read some of the blog posts over there, and then email the blogger. I would email him three ideas on guest blogs that you would be willing to write for his blog. Give him a choice of yeses. Don't just give him one idea. Pitch three blog ideas, and then he may come back and say, let me know, what, what, what more can you tell me about you? And you can offer him your media kit. If you, you might be pitching a story idea to a freelance writer about your expertise. You might be, um, let's pretend that you are the author who has written the book about um, how to set up, how to keep a home office running smoothly. You might offer a freelance writer who writes for entrepreneur.com a list of tips on money-saving tips to run your home office, okay? And they come back and say, oh, I love that. Um, what else can you tell me? You can write back and say, I can offer you the best 12 resources on where to get inexpensive office supplies. And I also have a media kit that, is, uh, that includes information about my book and it also includes a cheat sheet or a checklist on the topic of whatever the checklist happens to be about, would you like my media kit? And they will probably come back and say, sure, I'd love to see it if they're interested in your story. Remember, the media kit includes information that's going to make them cover you more easily. So don't use the media kit as the carrot that you dangle in front of them to get publicity. You have to pitch a great idea to them or a couple of great ideas or simply offer yourself as an expert who they can call on if they are writing about home offices. Perfect. Now we have a couple of questions, Joan. And um, one was about the no fee rule you talked about. I don't, somebody, I think somebody wanted to know if they should put their fee schedule at their website. No, don't make your fee schedule public. How, I never quote fees, ever, ever, until I know what that person wants. And I'll tell you why, okay, here's why. Somebody says to me, somebody emails me and they say, what is your fee for a speaking engagement? And I write back and say, my fee is $2,500. Okay, I would never do that because I want to quote a figure to them that also includes follow-up. I might want to include a fee that includes a webinar with people who attended the live event one month later so that I can answer follow-up questions. So I don't know exactly what that person wants, so why would, I, why would I quote a fee? I don't know if they want a 20 minute presentation, if they want an hour and a half presentation, if they want a half day workshop, if they want a full day event, or if they want a half day workshop with one or two follow up webinars. I don't know what the audience needs, and I want that meeting planner to call me and talk about it. And once I find out what they may need, something that's more than what I would ever think of including in a fee. And I want, obviously, as much money as I can make from this client. So you want the client to call you to tell you what they need. And once you find out what they need, you can then make some suggestions of things that you can offer. And give them a choice of yeses. I have A package, I have B package, and I have C package that I can offer you. And one is more expensive than the next. That's how I do it. Very interesting. That's very valuable. Uh, I'm making notes here, John. Yeah, don't put your fee schedule at your website because you might be automatically eliminating people who don't want to pay your fee. And your fee might also include, the fees are always negotiable and people are always going to try to talk you down and you never want to just simply lower your fee unless you are removing value from 
the package. Once they know that you're willing to come down, they're going to try to nickel to die and dime you to death on every single thing they buy from you. And don't do that. Okay, here's a question from Diana who wants to know, what kind of samples would you recommend if the book in question is an illustrated children's book? Um, if it's an illustrated children's book, what, what do you mean samples? What, do you, what does she mean by that? Do you know what she means by that? Oh, she means, I think she means a sample chapter. Yeah. I would include um, maybe a portion of the book that has maybe three illustrations in it, maybe a little collection of illustrations so they can see what it looks like. Well, that if makes sense. I mean, you, you have to show the illustrations. Have, yeah, you got to show the illustrations. You show the illustrations. So, I mean, it might be a few sample pages because many of those illustrated children's books are really rather short. A chapter wouldn't be appropriate. Exactly. But you know, showing two spreads maybe would be a good sample. Uh, where you know, usually you have the type on one side and the pictures on the other page. They face each other. That's the typical layout for an illustrated children's book. So maybe two spreads like that, they'll get a good feeling for the writing style and for the illustration style, and they don't really need to see more than that. Exactly. Um, Carolyn asks the question, is this mainly for speaking engagements? The, the fee schedule, yes. I don't put any fees at my website except for my hourly fee for consulting. Okay, I've got my hourly consulting fee at my website if you want to rent my brain. That's and then I have the the price for my mentor program. Those are the only fit. That's the only prices I put at my site. If you want to hire me as a speaker, you have got to call me. You have to tell me what you want, and then I will quote you a fee. Okay. Um, it was an interesting question Diana had about the about the author. You know, frequently authors will write an about the author for the author page at the back of their book. Uh huh. <clears throat> and she wanted to know if that is that's the same thing as writing these author bios. It might be, it might be, it it, it might be. Um, the for the back of the book, the about the authors for the back of the book. This is what I was taught. I was taught that that back of that book is really valuable real estate, and you need to sell the person holding the book in their hand on why they should buy the book. So. That about the author paragraph might be pretty puny on the back of your cover. That might be only a, the 50-word bio. That might be your 50-word bio. That's, yeah. that's on the back of your book. And remember, your media kit also needs to include the 100-word bio, and it needs to include that longer 400 to 600-word bio as well. You would never put that long a bio on the back cover of your book because that's valuable real estate that you're going to use to sell people on why they need to buy the book. Yeah, but it's a good point also, Joan, about why you need different length bios because uh, many uh, nonfiction books and fiction books as well will have an about the author section at the back of the book and that's going to be a long bio you can you can go long there if you want because I mean if you think about it the people who are reading that have probably finished reading the book and they are interested so you can put you know your whole long bio now when you flip to the back cover you're going to be using probably the shortest bio you have because yes. like Joan says the real estate there is in demand there's a lot of other things you need on your back cover and there's just not a lot of space it's important to have that because people like to relate to the author when they buy the book. So it's a good example of why you need all different kinds of bios. A long one for inside the book, a very short one for the back cover. Yes. And David uh, points out that he always writes his author bios in the third person, and that is how they should be written. Yes. Why? Why in the third person? Let's put your, put your thinking caps on. Why are you writing your author bios in the third person? Let's see if you remember a couple of things. I said this a couple of times. <laughs> Does anybody remember? Nope. Nobody nope. remembers. Jen. You're writing it in the third person so they can cut and paste it. Yeah, making their job That's, easy, aren't you? You're making their job easy. And when you refer, here's a little, another little tip. When you refer to yourself on second reference, 
refer to yourself last name only. On first reference, it's Joan Stewart. On second reference, I refer to myself as Stewart because that's how they do it in the media. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that we've run out of time. And uh, I wanted to note that Wynn Day did have that, uh, she did answer that question, so the reporter could copy and paste it directly. And Carolyn knew it was like a um, news story. And uh, makes it, Beverly knew it makes it easier for them, so did Betsy and Adam. So a lot of people were paying attention, Joan. I just Good. want you to know that. They heard you. <laughs> Excellent. That's the message. All right, so here's my message before we close up shop. Go over to authortoolkits.com slash media kit. A, a bunch of people actually came on in the chat and said they had gone over there and actually bought the product. Congratulations. We guarantee everything we sell 100%. If you buy this media kit, any of these versions, and two weeks from now you decide, you know, this isn't really what I need, that's okay. We guarantee it. We will refund your money, no questions asked. But I think if you buy one of these, whether it's the standard edition or the plus edition, or you really want to crank out some uh, extra side money with that commercial edition, I think you're going to be amazed at the value uh, that's in this product. There's just so much teaching and training in there put together with the templates. You don't have to worry about formatting. Uh, it's just really going to supercharge your book marketing. When you get the media on your side, that's when stuff really starts to happen, and that's exciting. So uh, I could tell you from my own experience, you know, when you get a book review in a, in a major um, periodical or something, or somebody who's really important in your field, that's an exciting day. That's a day you're going to start making more money for sure also. So I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we've completely gone to the 90-minute mark. Head over to authortoolkits.com slash media kit. Check it out. There's a bunch of videos there you can watch from people who bought this before and the kind of results they got. You can watch me fill out the author bios template. Really, I think it's about five and a half minutes. And uh, this is a purchase that will pay for itself for years to come. So I want to thank Joan for taking her time today to uh, give this awesome presentation. And thank everyone for coming. And I will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.